G'day, it's Grant here, and right behind us is our caravan. Today we're going to be doing a DIY project. We're going to be looking at in upgrading the electrics, and we're going to be putting in a battery management system. So why don't we take a look inside as to what this project's going to entail. So now we're inside our caravan, and right next to me here would be what you could loosely describe as the power plant. So this was the configuration in the way our van was set up when we purchased it back back in uh, 10 years ago. It's got two dual AGM batteries, and it's a bit hard to see what's in underneath there, but there is a, a standard size solar regulator. There's a couple of breakers, a small fuse box, and a two-stage, three-stage battery charger with 240 volt power. There's a feed that comes from the Anderson plug up the front all the way through directly to the batteries to therefore charge the batteries from the alternator of the car. Now, over the decade of using this, we've probably gone through now, I'd say three sets of these AGMs. So keeping and looking after the batteries in the current way it's been set up can be improved now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all this and we're gonna update it with new technology that's been proven and been operating around and we've been using it ourselves in other setups. So we're gonna be looking at putting a battery management system in there. So more on about how we go about doing that a little bit later. Okay, we're getting on with it now. So what we've done is I've, if you have a look here, I've got a piece of cardboard and I've measured this up. That's the actual hole opening. I've cut myself up a new piece of board. That's gonna be the new backboard. What I'm gonna try and do is get everything on that backboard so that we can mount it. So my idea at the moment is allowing me to play around and put things in different locations. But the idea will be that the BMS looks like it's gonna sit here. I'm going with a new fuse block here, and then I've increased the amount of outlets so that I can improve the overall uh, amount of circuits that I've got. So better for diagnostics. I'm adding in a isolator. Now the isolator is gonna go, oh, I'm kind of thinking maybe down here. And the reason for that is down the track, we may consider going to lithium. So we want a load disconnect. This does have the function for load disconnect. So for essential loads, we won't put that on. For non-essential loads, which will be what is in this fuse box, we'll actually connect this up to that. I'm looking at putting a shunt probably up around here somewhere, because it's out of the way. I don't really need to get to that. And we will be using these MIDI fuses. So we can get like 40 amp, 50 amp fuses. And I'm not sure they might sit up around here somewhere, the two of them. And around the back of the board so that we bring all the wires together, we're gonna to terminate everything with uh, some spades and we're gonna to lock them down nice and tight. No crimping, uh, twisting wires together, Mark far better. So the aim is to get this all on one board so that we're just connecting one board and we're running one lead around the back to make it all work. So I'll continue to keep on playing with it. I'm using the Red Arc uh, installation drawings and they're really good because it's very pictorial. So it helps you to be able to look, you know, the, there's the MIDI fuse, there's the isolator, so you can trace back. And I'm comparing that to my own little rough wiring diagram, which I'll improve a bit later. This is a great little DIY project provided you're handy on the tools. Follow a methodical step through process by labeling everything as you go. Use multimeters to test circuits and conductivity and use the best electrical components you can buy and ensure finishing it off to high quality standards. So the board's now complete and before we put it back in the caravan, why don't we run through it so you've got a bit of an idea because it'll be hard to see once it's in. So here it is here. We've covered the uh, marine ply with some uh, carpet, some industrial carpet, and there's all the components now on there. So we've got the BMS down at the bottom and we've wired that up. We've got a couple of MIDI fuses here using 40 amps, so they're going to be able to handle the current. The shunt's over here, so all the negative goes straight to ground. We've added an additional circuit, and that circuit over here is going to be for a small inverter that we're going to install. And down over here are the two main circuits. Now they're going to be controlled through this isolator, which will be used as a low voltage disconnect. So we'll set that up later. So if the battery should drop too low, what it's going to do is disconnect everything that's in this fuse board. 
So these are the non-essential loads. And over here, we've added back a small little circuit breaker. And this is going to be for essential loads. So we're going to have one light circuit on there and the uh, electronics to the fridge. So with that all done, it's now ready to install. We've put it all together at the back and everything's nice and secure. It's been tightened down. We've used heavy cables to provide our feed. So the next job is to get it in the van and get that circuit board wired up. Well, with the board now back in, the job's now done. Why don't you come in and have a closer look at what we've finished up with. So you may remember previously we had a battery charger and a separate regulator and a few other bits and pieces. That's now all been replaced with a battery management system. The fuse board is now in over here and we've added fuses and all the wiring. We've added additional circuits so that we've got better control on where all the lighting and the power is now being worked to. Below that is the load disconnect. That's protecting their batteries should we drop below charge. And the other thing I want to point out here is the wiring that we've used on the batteries. So it's really heavy cable and all that cable has been secured in place. So there's nothing can move. It's really, really positioned so that it can handle the, the extreme movement uh, that a van has when it travels. Lastly, over here, we've added a pure sine wave inverter. We've opted for the 350 watt, which is going to be perfect for us charging our batteries. So really what we've got to do now is put the cover back on here and the seat on. But before I do that, I do want to show you one other thing, and that's the display panel. So one of the big benefits for having a BMS is this screen over here. So there's a whole range of screens that you can flick through and see and change and look for. But what you're going to get from this is some solutions. You're going to be able to see whether the solar is coming in and what rate the solar is coming in. You're going to be able to see what state your battery's in. And when I say state, we're talking about state of charge, something that we couldn't see in the past. And on top of that, we're going to be able to see the loads that we're using when we're running things around. So coupled with the BMS and the screen, we've now brought our van up to date with the latest and greatest when it comes to a battery management solution.